Thank you, Scott. I'm hit! Turns out this stuff is a lot of fun in real life. I must have wronged our higher power because the world seems hell-bent on ensuring I never manage to attend a milsome event. Being Australian makes it harder since Airsoft is illegal here, so we play Gelsoft instead, which is just Airsoft, but instead of BBs, you shoot Orbeez. Or BBs. My last attempt was cut off when the rest of Australia collectively decided they hate Victorians and closed the borders due to a shagging some COVID patients. When they finally reopened, I bundled my mates into a car and floored it straight north to Queensland. Just to put in perspective how large Australia really is, the distance from Melbourne to the field we were playing at is just over 2,000 kilometers, and we were only dipping into the south of Queensland. The distance from Berlin to Moscow by road is 18,015 kilometers, and we were going to do the whole trip in just a day. Through adequate use of coffee and hot swapping four drivers, we were going to show Hitler how it was done. We immediately drove directly into the worst storm in 60 years, causing a natural disaster all along the coast. Heavy rain has already caused widespread flash flooding. In what's been described as a game of mud pies with spikes. Emergency warnings are in place along the... Danger zone tonight. Absolutely incredible. It's all on the coast tonight. God. Have you ever seen the rain? There's a giant banana, not as big as you think it is. Somehow we survived the storm and made it up to the field, ready to join the operation. I'd brought with me Misfits section, the core made up of myself and two fellow Cadians, along with a mate of mine from Victoria. This spent a lot of money on the Gelsoft kit. <laughs> yeah, that's right, isn't it? <laughs> same, same as yeah. Well, yeah. Oh shit! I just realised. Yeah, we're both. Oh, this is a, this can be uh, really oh, no. weird. When uh, in about you know a given month's time, we're both in the same Vic, but in real life. The other two members were Ty and Rat, who was an Excadian, and both of whom who were good lads. We all played the part of the PLAM, the People's Liberation Army of Menadia. Our opponents were supposed to be the filthy Northern Menadian Republican Army. Except due to a lack of recruits, we ended up fighting a civil war against our own intelligence service, the Special Intelligence Division. A spear platoon of theirs has gone rogue, and it was up to us to ensure they didn't cross the border and incite any rebellious activity among the civilian populace. Except that we actually ended up fighting the banana cartel most of the time. That's a, that's an interesting banana. We rode into the field on the back of a custom transport vehicle, made by bolting school chairs onto the bottom of a flatbed truck. As a section lead, I had to attend briefing with my platoon leader. This was a highlight of the event, the briefing presented by some lovely lads whose identities shall remain private, along with some very impressive custom kit and even some recognizable radios. As a note, this was my first video filmed IRO using GoPros, and I faced quite a few challenges. The first was that my original Mark I recording Ushanka was not a viable choice in Queensland, and the second was that on my VDV helmet the camera was offset and pointed upwards. This was more of an experience thing, oh, I... I was so fearful of recording nothing but my feet in the ground that I mostly recorded the sky instead. I am a professional video maker man. We deployed into the field and set up our first platoon harbour, setting up hoochies and gun pits. Also had our first tangle with the Australian wildlife. Oh. Okay. I've already been attacked by a spider. Day one was characterised by a fat lot of nothing right up until we got our first actual tasking. We were going to man a vehicle checkpoint. That's right. It was time for a real life checkpoint op. You can tell by the fact that I shitposted about it on Discord that it went about as well as your usual Armour 3 checkpoint operation. The vast majority of us were assigned to sit out in pitch blackness with no light or night vision and wait for a threat that never came. We even spotted lights a few times. Lights that turned out to be distant lightning. Meanwhile, the important leads got to actually interrogate the civilians and run the checkpoint and have fun roleplaying. It was absolutely the low light of the entire operation, especially considering that by the end, an entire day had passed and we'd yet to see any evidence of the force that was opposing us. I sat on a tree stump in such utter camouflage and silence that my platoon leader actually assigned a man to guard my sector, not realizing I was sat there. I only left my position after it was overrun and occupied by a small animal, which I decided would do a better job than me at acting as an early warning system. I'll give the admin players credit, they did a much better job of acting than your usual Zeus, but it didn't take long for me to be wildly jealous of the men I'd left behind at the harbour. After around two hours in the dark, we arrived back to our makeshift home. The entire time, the mosquitoes were already out in full force, and there was no escape from them. They bit through shirts and floor pants to bite you there. They're resistant to air regard, not that it mattered, as any repellent quickly sweated off of you. Even if you held them for a time, they just hovered next to your ear and drove you mental instead. You can even hear them in the GoPro footage. Throughout the night, we were spooked a few times, and we thought that due to SID doing nothing throughout the day, meant they must have been preparing for a night attack. 
Multiple times we stood to in our gun and rifle pits, watching out for reports of spotted light. The heat and humidity of the Queensland outback was wearing on me at this point. Fog in your glasses made it impossible to see anything, especially at night. I was used to the sparse, dry bush of southern Australia, but this terrain made fortunate sun ring in my ears. <laughs> I drank more water than I have ever drunk in my life during that event, and yet only pissed twice, because I sweated out the rest as fast as I drank it. I still remained in better shape than most, as we'd see by next morning. First, I had to weather my own storm, however. I was trying to get some sleep so I could put an end to a raging headache I had. I've suffered from migraine since I was a kid, which my doctors solved by replacing it with an opiate addiction. Despite the gremlins pounding my head with hammers, I was told to lead a recon patrol around the harbour in the dead of night to see if I could find some reported contacts. Stripped of basically everything but my AK, night vision optic, and my radio, I headed out into the darkness. It didn't take long before I dropped my night vision for a moment to wait for the night blindness to clear and saw lights in the distance. The enemy was actually out looking for us. I radioed it in, turned for home, passed a gun pit that was fighting a possum for their food, and hit the dirt. In an instant, I was asleep. The next morning opened with a cup of tea and heavy attrition. A clumsy squad mate stepped on my very expensive wooden and metal AK and snapped the stock off. This led to the duct tape that would continue to adorn it as I had to keep sticking more parts back on. Impressively, it never stopped firing. I slept in a full jacket in Oshanka because it kept the mosquitoes away from my ears. I will tell you that after slogging it in the bush, nothing goes down better than a hot cup of tea. Unfortunately for the rest of our platoon, things weren't so rosy. We had multiple players drop out due to heat stress, some quite severe, and even my own mate rushed off the hospital with chest pains. He's fine now, thankfully. Just quite literally has too big of a heart. This attrition would continue, and our low starting numbers of just 23 players in the platoon would drop to 11 by the end of the operation. The SOD outnumbered us, it seemed, from Operation Start, and utterly dwarfed us by Operation End. We stepped off, day two. A long march out into the field to bring us to our next platoon harbour. Finally, first contact. Contact. You have contact. Okay. Niner, two zero alpha. Contact about my nine o'clock. Over. Two zero alpha, I'll pull back to this side of the track. We're gonna strong point high ground with thick trees to your rear, over. Copy that, dudes are off, pulling back. Out. Con Contact. Road, road. No! <laughs> You're fucking shitting me. There we go. Fight, fight, fight! Misfit down, what's left? Me. My gun broke as I rushed. <laughs> it's fixed now at least. I'm done with back for my kit. Vips, you've got lead till I'm back. Any misfit on me? Let's go! Two retreating up the road! On me, let's go! Fuck! Two zero Alpha at rear of platoon. We've got two enemy hostiles. Flee down the main road we just came down. They're out of our weapons range, didn't hit either of them. They've escaped, over. End result was four SID fleeing because our effective weapon range is that of a wet fart. No hits or kills on either side. The fresh harbour was deployed and we were even visited by the cartel and the press. You came all the way up from, you know, New South Wales and Victoria. Yeah. How you feeling? <sighs> Tired and hot. <laughs>
<laughs> but mostly, I mean, like, there's been some good excitement today. We finally saw the enemy. Yep. They ran away from us quite quickly, but we saw them. <laughs> uh, the drive up was fun with all the rain. Oh, yeah. We drove through one of the worst storms in New South Wales history, so. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. About 20 meter visibility. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But anyway. What's that? What's that? Oh, shit. That's a massive truck. I yeah. Oh, yeah. They were coming out of the bloody mist. So we can't stay longer, but Platoon Con wants us moving, so we've got to roll. Thank you very much, man. Oh, yeah, you want a photo? Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. We'll jump in. Yeah. Come on in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get your gun out of the way. Sure, sure. I'll do. We even made the local news. Have you ever seen the rain? God, it's so fucking bright. Oh. Coming down on sun and day. Some admins showed up in order to assist our falling numbers and were, in a move I definitely didn't favor, sent off an attack, despite their intended purpose being defense. Not that they were somehow incapable, the furthest thing from it. Bob led them, and Bob not only owned the whole area we played on, but is an ex-commando, ex-recon leader, and ex-sniper. A humble and awe-inspiring man who could easily outpace any of us despite his age. My problem was more that most of the players had done nothing up to that point, and reaching for a chance to get out and do something, even if it was just a patrol. Our chance came a moment later, when the platoon leader informed me that he'd forgotten to provide our radio net to the admins, and it was my job to find them and tell them the net. Finding an ex-commando in his own private jungle was a job I hadn't expected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Color? One person. Okay. Walking. Hit the deck, hit the deck, hit the deck. See that uh, burnt out tree is just looking behind it now. Where that leaning tree is, you just be looking behind that now. Yep, that's 200 meters. Yep. One person. Eyes on. Okay. Let's go. I'd put a guy there. Let's go. I've got a solution, you're not gonna like it. Nice one. Contact, contact, one man down! One down house, nine zero alpha, uh, two zero alpha, breaking contact, heading for harbour. Have eyes on one approaching up the track behind me. Unsure if it's my down man coming back from Kazavak or a SID, over. We're gonna ambush some bloody, uh, a really good spot actually, the bastards. You bloody got us at the dam, didn't you? Oh no, that was me. I was looking for you. I was right behind you. I was calling out to you to duck right. <sighs> you went right past me. I ducked in when you got hit. Oh. I got four men on the damn wall. I did. We, we slipped past you. We were looking for you. Yeah. Right, Radio Channel 21. That was my job. I can say it's done. Oh. I got one man down. Did you get the bastards? No, no, no. Uh, my job yeah. was to secure the dam and keep it. All right. So well, get them, get down far side. They were. Looked like at least two. East side dam, we took shots through the trees. I can show exactly on the map where they are. The first contact and death of the entire operation was my own man, Darkery. I returned and took a break after our big run, while our whole platoon returned to the lake to engage the hostiles we found. It was only about 10 minutes later that I heard this over radio. We're engaged. Need reinforcements. Negative. All assets dead. Bad news. Sounds like our boys got whacked. Uh, I just heard on radio, you won't be getting reinforcements, all assets are dead. So, commandos are in contact, I can hear shooting over the radio, but... Fucked if I know, so get ready, because if they're done, they're coming here next. Our platoon so, was soundly destroyed in a matter of moments. Once they all returned, I was ordered to take Misfit out on a recon patrol with the ex-commandos and find the enemy harbour. We were well excited. This was a real mission, and the guys we were with seriously impressed us. There's no footage of it, as we stopped just before reaching the enemy harbour, 
because we got a call over radio to return to base. We had a warning order from the admins. We double-timed it back, exhausting ourselves, and were informed of the mission the platoon had been assigned, to find the enemy harbor and mortar it. To say I was livid is putting it lightly. The admins instead hand-waved the location of an observation post using drones, and the lads used the mortars to drop onto them. Roger. On you when you want to launch. Bang! Fire! Sorry, I'm good. Yep. Did a blow? Yep. You're ready. Fire! Fire! Just throw it down. Yeah, just throw it down. Make sure you reach that thing. Yep. Fire! Alright. Round two! Uh, this one's your last. Meanwhile, back in camp, we entertained ourselves by building walls and blowing shit up. Yeah, I'm sure she'll be right. There we go. Fire in the hole! Oh, God, that was incredible. I loved the little whir before it fucking went bang. You didn't actually feel anything? So gels in it? Yeah. Yeah. They kind of went here, there, and everywhere. Dealing with the heat became a new challenge. That night we laid out glow sticks pointing to our harbour so that SID would finally visit. And visit they did, for a friendly meeting. Our platoon leaders met and shook hands while I returned to eating my instant mashed potato. If you'd like to make the Ross River spicy mash, first you'll need your packet of instant mashed potato and chives. You'll also need some black pepper and the Tabasco sauce. Boil up enough hot water so that you aren't needing powder, but not too much that you make potato soup. Combine all and eat while laughing at the squad mate who brought instant noodles like a tosser. An alliance with the SID secured, we all went to bed. Except for me. I went out on a night patrol to try and deliver snacks to the SID platoon, found a snake, broke both of my boots, and came home soaked from the downpour. The admins found out about the alliance and cartel members showed up to shoot up our tents while yelling about cocaine. Considering I was in my underwear to let my clothes dry, I decided to take the stealthy tactical approach and fell back asleep while letting others deal with the attack. The final day was one of organized attack. I duct taped the soles of my boots back on, my section got our hands on a Carl Gustav, a fortified village target, a technical destroy, and transport to it. Even had a hacking device and a USB to find. Things were looking up. I began the task of decrypting information if we get to that stage. The Gustav actually fired and hit twice, but the smoke bomb that was meant to deploy on the far side was too wet to light. Go, go, go. Get through, go. The two sides are through. Gustav will be delayed. All right, swapping in. All right, we're good. What's that way? Over the cost and watch over there. You're hit? Right, get to him. Cross to him, crossing, crossing. Right, you look after him. Get him his turn and turn, okay? Right here. Pull back, pull back. These guys got this covered. We're going back around. Look who it is, boys. Right, I'm on you, Kermit. Watch right. Yep, on you. Got you. Out of now! Yep. Friendlies. Friendlies. Alright. Tight, Darkery. Far building. Go. Jake, you with them. Spicy by now? What's my wounds? Take you up. Take you up. Alright. Take you up. All about. All about. Okay, how are they? Right. I'll steal one of those, sure. Good night, Andrew. 
That's uh, that's actually banana. <laughs> Move down. Go, go, go. Hold down, friendlies. I'm the control. I'm the control. Once we'd secured the area, we were told to fortify the FOP and hold off the SID attack that was inbound. It seemed the Alliance was not exactly yeah, upheld. Uh, Remy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Those finally showed up. Are you down under game? Wait a second. Are you the one that's down under game? Oh, I am indeed. I just subscribe to your channel. <laughs> I was literally having dinner on the thing about it. Down under game. Okay, I'll go subscribe to them. Yeah, right. all good. Content, by the way. Hey, cheers, man. Yeah. <laughs> I like your little buddy Fob, Jesus. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> this is really nice. Yeah, I would, yeah, All right. It is. The only problem is in this enclosed space, I can smell myself in the night. Pretty. That's a good idea. I'm going to leave. Bye. It's red. They're working an angle on me here. Good entrance. Good duck. Huh? You hit? Yeah. Right here. I'm here. Put your shit on. Fuck, I'm hit! I'm hit! Come on, come on, come on. Come on, get behind him. Cracking, cracking, cracking. Ah, fuck! Ah, fuck! Give me my leg! Give me, buddy. Come back. Yeah. One on main entrance! Can't move. I need you to cover me. My gun's on the other side. One on main entrance, looking down the entrance. Yep, Don't he's got me. me. I'm not worth it. He's on the left side of the blue barrels. Oh, I'm hit. Oh. Goodbye. Oh. Alright, job done. I'm gonna move. Cover me. Go. Moving, moving, moving! Ceasefire! Ceasefire! The fight ended in a rather disappointing fashion, with Endex caught in the middle of it and the sides shaking hands. For fun, we switched sides and assaulted the fob. After a bit of shooting, you guys finally decided to be friends. <laughs> All I had to do was stop you from getting the main gate. Crossing center. Moving, moving. Shots! Ah! Down. I'm dead. And with that, our time at the field was up. Funnily enough, the torrential downpour that we experienced on our way up had halted for most of the event. And just as we got in our cars to leave, it started up again. None of this happened when we were actually at the event. Yes, no, somehow. I do not know how. This this is just a fucking act of God who is like, ah yes, the soldiers have returned home. Release the downpour. Our trip home was through the nature reserve, since the coastal highway was flooded and we still had to go through heavy rain, flooded roads, and more. We stopped for the night, passing by a lovely country pub in the town of Mendoran first. Seriously, go check it out. Lovely place. The next morning, we headed home. I enjoyed the experience, but I would be unlikely to attend the same event again. It was stuck between a war game and a LARP, and it wasn't particularly good at either of them, with player numbers being a key issue. We spent the vast majority of the very little time we spent fighting facing off against the admins instead of opt for. If I was going to play a full-on LARP, then I'd enjoy the role-playing side of it, but there was very little role-play. On the other hand, the war game side of it was almost completely not present. Most of our engagements with Sid were by accident, with only one real intentional engagement happening in the entire three-day event. We didn't have the push to engage each other, nor did the commanders have enough free reign to do so. The highlights were definitely the special kit, like the Gustavs, the hacking device, and the mortars. The biggest problem was the lack of opposed taskings, and the general idea of quantifiable objectives. I had no idea at the end of the game who had won or succeeded because I barely knew what our actual goals were beyond stopping the SID from crossing the border. By opposed taskings, I mean provide the two sides with objectives that directly conflict. It was stated that the idea was SID would have the opportunity to ambush us while we did the vehicle checkpoint, but they just didn't. Giving the PLAM and SID the same task with opposite goals, conflict could be organized, like defending a location or securing a cache. And at the end of the game, you could look at those objectives and consider either a failure, a draw, a total victory, or anything in between. In saying all that, I'm still glad I went, and definitely want to do more Milsim in the future. Just might avoid driving through a natural disaster to get there.
Watame exacts vengeance for Chechnya. 